record button, share my screen. I do, I see. And then we're going to jump right in and talk about this, uh, this course. Let me pull the syllabus up right quick. So this is, uh, this class is Chem 322, uh, which is uh, Organic Chemistry Lab. <clears throat> we have the class listed as a hybrid, and for some reason, the Wednesday section did not, the time didn't post. I posted these classes back in the spring, and the time for the, today's class for somehow got switched to TBA, but it should have been 1 o'clock, just like the Tuesday lab, 1 to 5. Uh, I'm moving the time to one thirty at the behest of the uh, associate provost because they changed the lecture times and pushed those times 30 minutes back, but they didn't touch the lab. So they asked us to kind of do it in, unofficially or informally. So that's why you see the, um, that's why you see the time listed as, as 1.30 on the syllabus. All right, I know this is gonna, it may cause an issue for some people, but we got to work around for that. Um, and I'll be as flexible as possible. So you need to have had, before we even jump in, you need to have had um, general chemistry part one and two labs and need to have passed those labs with a C or better. Uh, I've had students that have tried to sign up for this class without taking those labs and it's just, it's not a good idea. Even though they're not <laughs> necessarily related, there are some things that you learn in uh, G Chem Part Two that you carry over to this course. So uh, there's no book. All of the experiments, when we are, uh, if we do on ground experiments, they will be located here in uh, course documents. So I'll open that up real quick. So you'll see uh, weekly experiments. If you open that, all the experiments, everything that, all the procedures and all that stuff are here. Um, so you don't need the book. You, you you do need a composition book or some type of notebook. I'm kind of thinking since the air is still, I, normally what we do with labs anyway is we stagger so we don't start until about two weeks into the semester just to give people time to get adjusted and give us time to get our stuff together. Uh, the air conditioning in Armstrong is not working right now, so I wouldn't take you in there anyway because it's just not, not a good thing to be up there with all those chemicals without proper ventilation and in addition to being in the environment that we're in. So Chem 322, you're going to learn whether virtually or physically, you're going to learn uh, techniques related to organic synthesis, uh, like how to read a, uh, infrared, how to read a U, uh, uh, NMR, uh, how to do a, a recrystallization. All of those different types of techniques are going to be uh, a part of this course. Uh, and then um, there are also other parts like spectros learning different spect spectroscopic techniques, uh, learning about uh, melting point and characterization, all of that. So we're going to have, um, it's, it's a good class. It's not overly strenuous, I don't think, uh, but you're going to have to work and a lot of this is, some of this is going to be on uh, virtual just because of the conditions and the fact that, so I, I want to say something too to the, to the, speak to the point about uh, virtual versus hybrid and all this other stuff. So prior to all of, prior to this semester, right, we didn't have an idea about what we were going to do. Nobody kind of thought this thing through. So they allowed the enrollment to stay the same, like really, if you wanted to have these COVID capacity numbers and courses, the enrollment should have been capped during pre-registration. Right now, it's like 50 people signed up for this class. And you've been in the labs in Armstrong. That's like, that's like putting sardines in a can in those labs. So the way we're gonna do this is, uh, when, as far as the on-ground labs, if we do labs on ground, uh, we're gonna break this group up into Man, we got 53 people uh, logged in. We're gonna, we're gonna break this group up into multiple small groups, no more than four people per group. And then what we'll do is on alternating weeks, we'll have a representative from each group come and perform the experiment and we'll stream 
uh, that particular uh, lab session will stream it so that everybody else who's not there can log in and be participating and taking notes in, in your lab notebook and things like that. Right, so part of your attendance is, is gonna be having to log in if you're not physically present in a lab that we're doing. And we gotta do it that way because number one, we can't fit 53 people into those two labs, 300 and 313. But then number two, we gotta maintain some level of social distancing. So, uh, and I'm not trying to be piled up in there with y'all like that. I don't even like being piled up uh, under other circumstances without COVID. I definitely don't wanna do it. Hey, excuse me. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's just let me join the Zoom me. So I don't know if I missed anything before you started talking now. No, no, you're good. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Um, and did I hit the record button? Yes, I did. All right. So uh attendance wise, <laughs> if you're not physically present, then you'll be definitely streaming. So you'll be able to see what's going on in the lab. I think uh, the dean got some uh, good webcams that we can use, so we'll just do it that way. And I can stream it to my YouTube page because I got enough subscribers on there to, to stream to a device. <clears throat> so the, the day before lab or the, a couple of days before lab, usually probably be on Monday, I'll send everything out on Mondays. If we're doing an on-ground lab, you'll get the pre-lab lecture videos uh, for this class. So instead of me taking an hour to stand up in front of you and talk to you about what we're gonna be doing, you'll get a video, probably 10 minutes long, maybe less, uh, with some instructions in it. And once you, once you look over that, if you come in on ground, we'll have to really, we're gonna plan that out pretty well if we do it on ground. And we'll have, a, um, Again, no more than five or six people in the actual lab in the room. Uh, and then everybody else will be will participate through streaming. Uh, as, as for, we already talked about the course meeting and then we're also gonna incorporate <clears throat> labster simulations. So every student is gonna have to do five labster simulations. So labster is like this online, uh, it's like an online lab simulator and the way it works is that they'll have like specific topics. I'm, I'm going to pick the topics ahead of time, but they have topics and then you go in and you go, go through a simulation with that topic and they, they gauge your progress. They gauge your com, uh, level of completion. Like if you fit, if you do it at 10%, you only do 10% or 5%, they gauge that. But then at the end, there's a little quiz that you have to take. And they have a little grade book where everything is recorded. So all you have to do it is go to that simulation, complete it, and then be done. My suggestion is to do it when you when you open Labster, close everything else, all your browsers, apps, everything, because Labster is a like it's in the cloud, but it's it takes a lot of computing power to run those simulations, and a lot of times they'll make your computer crash if you have too many other things open. So we're gonna do that in addition to what we do on ground. Uh, and then everybody will keep a lab notebook, whether it's virtual or not, you're still gonna have a lab notebook. Uh, you can, in this case, uh, I normally require a uh, composition book, but in this case, I'm not even tripping about that just because of the conditions. Uh, but you do need a lab notebook. The reason why we do composition books is it's simple, right? If you're doing uh, if you're taking experimental notes, you want to you want a, book, a notebook where you can't rip pages out and fudge your data or fudge the experiments. So, but in this case, I, it doesn't matter to me what type of notebook you use. Uh, no, this is for the meeting for general chemistry is at two thirty. This is for uh, organic chemistry. All right, so the outline of your notebook is here in the syllabus, title, reaction, <clears throat> the purpose, procedure, and observation, and then data. And then you always wanna leave a, a little section after data for any type of spectral data that you collect, any NMR, infrared, and things like that. All right, 
Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, you're welcome, no problem. All right, so the safety part when we're on ground <laughs> is gonna be a lot easier to enforce with less people, but you do need to take the safety exam. It's the same exam you took for Dr. Biswas, same exam you took in general chemistry. It's located in this link where it says testing exams. And there's a video here, there's a, a key with the answers on it, and then there's the safety exam right here. You need to take that and make a 23 out of 23. Uh, we won't worry about check in and check out because uh, we, we have, we're just not gonna sweat that right now. Uh, as far as grading is concerned, you'll have 100 points for attendance. That's free, free points. Uh, notebook, two notebook checks, one lab report, two exams, and then five labs to simulations. So these are all the points for the lab. And then the lab etiquette is not gonna be as uh, detrimental because it's, there'll be less people in, in a physical lab. But that's, that's normally like if you have to get warned about goggles too many times or you come to the lab with cut up pants on or halter top or tank tops, flip flops, whatever. All of that is part of lab etiquette because you gotta come, when you do come physically, you gotta come dressed to do the experiment. And that, that's just a safety precaution. Uh, let's see, so your lab report is gonna be uh, six to 10 pages. I, I wouldn't worry about that right this moment, but uh, I do have some samples on Blackboard <clears throat> and I have a, a video on YouTube kind of walking through what to expect from that lab report. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, six to 10 pages, and you'll have basically a title page, a uh, description of the methods, uh, well, an introduction first, then a description of your methods, uh, procedure, and then data. And your data should be listed in tables. And I got some samples on Blackboard that we can look at to just give you an idea of how to set this thing up. In the event that, you know, God forbid, the semester goes back to all virtual, you know, we get, couple of cases of COVID on campus or something and we have to go back to being fully virtual, I'll assign you a report. So I'll give you a topic to write on and a rubric to follow as far as what to include in that report. Uh, last semester, I think we did like ibuprofen or something like that. And then this semester, we'll probably, I'll probably pick a different topic. It's all, I always try to base it on like some a current event. And so if, it comes to this, then we'll probably do a uh, we'll, we'll do a lab report on a topic related to uh, the pandemic. Maybe this this uh, drug remdesivir or something like that. Uh, but let's pray that we don't have to do that. Um, I think that's it for the syllabus as far as the rules. This doesn't change. We've all had labs before, so it doesn't change. Right? Goggles, closed toe shoes. Uh, no phones. If you have a, if you have your phone and you're not using it to follow a procedure, then it needs to be put away. If you get a, a call that's important, you can step out in the hallway and take it. <laughs> but no talking on the phone uh, while you're at the lab bench. That's just not not good. Uh, as far as the time, again, the lab is slated for one, but to accommodate for the other uh, lecture courses that have that 30 minute gap, we'll we'll move that. Uh, time back 30 minutes and if it's a simulation that you're doing that we're doing in a particular week then it won't matter anyway uh, you can just do that and finish it before the next lab period um, let's see so again just to reiterate uh, you need to take the safety exam watch the safety video that's here there's a link to it here's the, the key to the exam and then the exam is here uh, anytime we do a midterm or an exam or anything is always going to be here in tests and exams. And then anytime we have to turn something in, like a lab report, or a notebook, uh, check pages, anything like that, it'll be in assignments. Uh, and then again, all your experiments are listed here in course documents and under weekly experiments. So the syllabus is right here where it says syllabus and course information. All right, so you'll click on that and the syllabus will be right there.
All right. Any the, I've been talking a lot. And, and does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Come on. Um. So I know that you said that you pushed. They pushed the time back to one thirty for. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's unofficial. Unofficial. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So like I have a class from. So this class is one thirty to five. Right. And I have a class from two to three. Mm. So, um, and I can't, and that's on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's so, and I, can I like leave out, come back? That's the same with me as well. Leave out, come back, or just stay in and log in for the other one? Let's see how, let's, well, okay, so here's the thing, right? Since it's a hybrid course and since the on-ground stuff is not going to be everybody in the lab at the same time, we might be able to work around that. Um, but let's just say, for instance, if we're on ground and we got six people, one person from each group, which I need y'all to do, by the way, set up the group, whatever group me or however you're going to communicate, I need everybody in there so we can, you guys can choose groups, four people, four to five people maximum in a group, and then give me the list so I can know who's doing what, right? I normally will group people up. Well, I normally allow people to group up on the first day, find each other and join groups like that. But since this is so different, y'all can actually, I'm going to leave it up to y'all to, to pick your own groups and then put somebody in charge of sending me like the list of everybody who's in each group. Uh, if, like I said, if it's one of those days where we're on ground and a person from your group is there, then it's not going to matter, right? Because I'll be streaming the lab and you can still be participating in that for as long as you're able. Are you following? And then after that, you can just do what you need to do. So, because we do have some people uh, enrolled in this class who are not coming on campus at all. So it's going to be the same thing for them. Okay, thank yeah, you. I'll, I'll be flexible with it because I know this is just, it's a bunch of crap, man, honestly. And I think uh, we had an opportunity to really do uh, the reopening stuff the right way, but when you got a handful of people making decisions for the whole university, that's never a good thing. And it's, you always want to involve people, the, the soldiers, you know what I mean? You don't want to just make plans and then just say, okay, y'all go execute. <laughs> so we're going to make it work. Excuse me. Go ahead. So you said classes is on Tuesday and Wednesday, right? So, um, just no, 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 no. There are two labs. There's section one is on Tuesday and section two is on Wednesday. Okay, I also have another question. Mm -hmm. um, you said the prerequisites uh, in order to be in this class was to uh, have a C in general chemistry lab one or two, but I'm a freshman, so I never took neither one of those classes. So I don't know how I got this class. But you have Chem 322 on your, on your schedule? Yes, like your class, this is how I got the um the Zoom link because I'm a part of your class. I went to Blackboard to get the Zoom link and that's, you know, how I got. All right, S send me an email after this. Are you sure you're not in the two to five? No, mine actually on the thingy thing, it said uh, 130 to 230. But it, it says that I'm a part of your class, which is why I'm confused. That's weird. Yeah, let, send me a... Um... Send me an email after this, and I'll look into it and try to help you get straightened out. What's the major? Um, I, uh, I think I'm in the wrong class because mine say two to five. Yeah, you just you just logged in early. We were supposed to meet at two thirty. Okay, so for the two thirty one, it will be the same link. Mm-hmm. Okay, well then I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no problem. Right, thank you. <laughs> okay. Any any other questions? Let me see. Dr. Russell, I have a question. Okay. I just emailed you um, because I have a physics lab mm -hmm. on Wednesdays from 2 to 5, but your class starts at 1.30, so is that the way I can still, like, stay in this class without having to switch my schedule again, or? What? Are you able to do Tuesday at 1? Um, I I'll have move. to see. I move. I probably can, people. though. Yeah, I move some people on Tuesday to this section. So I could do the same thing. I can move some people from this section <laughs> to Tuesday. 
if you okay. can accommodate it. Okay, yeah, I'll look at my schedule and I'll email you back All to right. make sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting. Um, I also had a conflict similar to her. Tuesday one would work for me. Would I need to do anything to get switched over or just I I need to look and see how many slots are in there. I may just be able to add. Just send me an email. Okay. And um yeah, send me an email and then let me I'll put a list together and maybe I can if I can't do it, I'll ask the Dr. Brumfield to do it. So anybody with a conflict that's that wants to move to Tuesday at one, first check your schedule, make sure it'll fit. And then second, send me an email saying that. <laughs> and if I can switch you, I will. And if I can't, I'll get Dr. Brumfield to do it. All right, any other questions about anything else? Let me stop.